Greetings citizens, my name is Failure to Report and today we're going to be talking about customization and monetization. While the recent video from CIG covering the ship customization system is a few days old now, I've been out of the country for the last week and I really didn't get a chance to go over it. So while we've been waiting for this new system to get in game now for some time, as it was announced at CitizenCon 2018 that it would be coming online with the 300i rework and variants, it seems CIG is finally starting to talk about the new feature, which has everybody gossiping about customization and more interestingly, how it will be implemented and possibly monetized. First and foremost, let's talk a bit about customization in Star Citizen. While this new feature was promised during CitizenCon last year, it is not a new concept to Star Citizen. The ability to swap out components, make changes to interior visuals, and even ship structures has been a major pitch promise since the very early years of the project. But this customization system is one of the first systems of the bigger picture, and we're finally going to be seeing it getting introduced into the game. In last week's Inside Star Citizen, Disco Lando gave way to lead vehicle artist Chris Smith, who gave us our first real look into the system. Showing off various interior coloring options for the 300 series, different materials for paneling, cockpit steering wheels, aft interior layouts, and pilot chairs. It was honestly nice to see this system being more than just a basic color swap for a few preset regions. It felt like the sneak peek actually gave a sense of making the 300i's interior your own. And while it was a shame they didn't mention anything on exterior customization in terms of color or shape, it was a great first look in my opinion. However, as with anything in Star Citizen, when Cloud Imperium talks about one thing, they create 20 new questions that will likely not get answers to until implementation happens. And one of the biggest questions to come out of last week's video is in regards to how this system will be implemented and if it will be monetized. That's right, the dreaded M word. Now, since there are channels like the Nubifier, who I have no doubt did a great job of giving a quick rundown on the origin story video, I don't see any reason to try to rehash that video when Noob already does such a fine job of trimming the fat off of CIG's videos to give a quick need to know. So instead of talking about the ship customization system, what I'd like to talk about are some of the reactions I've seen to last week's video and what my thoughts are on that system. So let's go ahead and get into it. Firstly, I've seen a lot of people grabbing pitchforks since last week over the idea that these ship customizations are going to be costing real money and that it's another way for CIG to pick pockets over and over and over again. Now, to be sure, Cloud Imperium likes them some money and I can envision plenty of ways they could milk the tits dry with this system since many backers are just short of addicted to playing the hangar collecting and shuffling game. So I can only imagine what happens if you give them another charge based system of changing their ship's appearances, colors, and interiors. But to be clear, CIG has not yet said anything regarding how this system is going to be implemented. So while I never have an issue with calling Cloud Imperium out when they are doing something crappy or anti-consumer, we aren't quite there yet, guys. One of the big things you'll have noticed if you're a longtime viewer, or you'll probably see if you're a newer viewer to the channel, is I constantly mock the hardcore believers for dream crafting in Star Citizen. But when you start doing the same thing just in a negative direction, you start looking much the same as the passionate cult. Just negative instead. My stance on Star Citizen after 3.0's letdown has become, I'll believe it when I see it. I no longer credit CIG or Star Citizen for their ambition because it doesn't mean anything anymore. When they actually get something in game or make a policy change and it's real enough that I can touch it in game or it affects me on their website, then I'll give it meaning. The point I'm getting at here is, don't start doomsaying until the end times are actually happening, because it makes critics look just as bad as the fanatics, and the biggest reason those guys are mocked and not taken seriously outside of the star citizen's fear of influence is because they give life to their own stereotype. That said, I do want to address the monetization thing anyways because I've had so many people PM me about it or talked about it on the channel discord. Look. If Cloud Imperium decides to introduce the ship customization system as a paid feature, I have no problem with it. I know, I know, I'm a big shill whale now, but hear me out on this one, alright? Firstly, there isn't an MMO around that doesn't have a monetization plan, and since Chris has impressed the idea that a subscription fee is utterly impossible for the future of Star Citizen, which it isn't, they make it very clear in the terms of service by the way, sorry backers, 
That leaves either continuing to have ship sales, which they've kind of sort of said they would stop at release, but again, there's no obligation for that either. But one of the more official plans to keep the game running post-launch has been the sale of in-game credits and customizations. Now, there's a mountain of a conversation to be had on the subject of moving away from ship sales and whether it's right or wrong, fair or unfair, but ideally it should be CIG's intent to shift into something a little less pay to win and more of a cosmetic funding model. And I would gladly see the ship customization system be a first step towards that. Now, for those not familiar with Elite Dangerous, its monetization model involves buying access to the game, and that's it if you want to play the game and nothing else. However, if you want to customize your ship so you don't look like every other ASP explorer out there, you need to open up your wallet again. This funding model has been very successful for Frontier Developments because, as many other studios have started to figure out, one of the most desired features players crave is the ability to make their avatar their own, and they are willing to spend weeks and months working towards it, as well as throwing their credit card at a game when it's an option. So the applaudable thing with Elite Dangerous' funding model is that these cosmetics do nothing for your gameplay outside of making your ship and commander feel a little bit more like your own. They don't provide any advantages and they don't give any kind of power. However, one of the things I will always criticize Elite Dangerous for is that these cosmetics cannot ever be earned by playing the game. If you want your ship to be a color besides the base stock model, you're gonna pay for it. There is no basic free color options while selling unique or special skins and colors. If you don't wanna look like a brand new player, you're spending money. So while I applaud Elite Dangerous for never dipping into the pay to win funding model, it isn't exactly the best example of where I'd like to see Cloud Imperium take customization. But it was a similar game to Star Citizen, which helped kind of set up a baseline. So moving on to what, in my opinion, is one of the best customization models out there, we go to another genre and a little game that proved it could, Warframe. In Warframe, the most celebrated feature of the game is customizing your, well, just about everything. From your ship that is the home to your character, to your Warframe suits, you customize their look, you customize their colors, you customize the way they hold their weapons, how they stand, there's a lot of making it your own, okay? Now, as a brand new player to the game, you start with very little from Warframes, weapons, colors, and cosmetic options. Yet, in Warframe, you can buy all of these things with real money at any time. Want another dye palette with some better blues? You can buy that. Want to try that cool new Warframe everybody is talking about this month? You can buy that too. But what if you're one of those players who doesn't want to spend real money? In Elite Dangerous, you would be left looking like a basic boy because you wouldn't let Frontier into your wallet again. But in Warframe, it's very different. While you can't grind for every cosmetic option in the game, you can earn premium currency by acquiring items other players might want and selling them to earn the currency used to purchase items. So if you want to buy that fancy edgelord color palette with the dark reds and the midnight blacks, you can spend some time farming some desirable items, sell them to another player for platinum, and then buy and unlock it from the game store. So when I talk about being fine with Cloud Imperium monetizing the ship customization system, it's this approach that I'm hoping we'll see them take, allowing players to either open their wallets to directly buy the customizations that they like, or allowing players either unable or unwilling to spend money the ability to earn them somehow in-game at a fair rate. While Cloud Imperium has yet to give any real details on how this system is going to be introduced into Star Citizen, Chris Roberts did say very early on in this game that he wanted players to be able to earn everything in-game. And although I can easily see the ship customization system being a very exploitable means of creating new revenue for Cloud Imperium, I think a large majority of even the faithful backers would be in an uproar if CIG only allowed ship customization through real money transactions. So while I can understand that a lot of viewers may have had experiences with Star Citizen that have left them feeling betrayed, deceived, let down, or in some other way offended by the project, the ship customization system isn't a new feature thought up for a quick buck. It was one of the earliest promises made by Chris. What is new and unknown, however, is how Cloud Imperium will actually implement it going forwards. We've seen a lot of revisions on things ship-related, from modularity, battlefield upgrade kits, fuel intakes, and so on. So while I can completely understand the apprehension from a lot of viewers since last week, I am not at all worried about how this system will get implemented. I do think CIG will find some way to monetize it in the short term, but if Star Citizen gets off the ground, I would fully expect there to be options for players who don't want to spend money just as we are slowly seeing some of those same pathways open up for players who didn't want to spend money on ships. 
I do, however, think all the drama around this new system could have been mostly avoided if Cloud Imperium had taken to heart one of the biggest criticisms that they constantly receive. Communication! This new feature was given a release date in October 2018 and promised to be going live with the 300i rework. Yet last week's video is the first in-depth exposure CIG has given it, despite it being a major new system for Star Citizen. Instead of spending all those months ignoring questions about how it was going to work and be implemented, Cloud Imperium could have given some very basic insights over the nearly half a year backers have been waiting. Instead, they released a fairly vague YouTube video shortly before the feature goes live and opened up a Q&A on Spectrum that is filled with generic questions that shouldn't have been needed to be asked in the first place. So that's a quick look at the recent video covering ship customization in Star Citizen and my general thoughts on the matter. If you're curious about something I didn't cover in this video, feel free to ask in a comment and I'll gladly give my two credits when I get a chance. As always, I am Failure to Report and I hope this video was in some way thought provoking. Stay safe out there and I will see you guys and girls in the verse.